again. I'm Pastor AJ, and I know what you're thinking. Yes, they will ordain just about anybody these days. Um, actually, I know what you're really thinking. No, there's no AC. Sorry. So if everyone could just breathe a little less, uh, maybe get a nice coffee drink, I think we'll be good. All right. Um, you know, it's great to be with you this morning to share God's word. And before we get into that, we're going to kick things off with a video. Didn't I? Yeah, I did. You can admit it. You know, sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone a little bit uh, to interact with new people, invite new people uh, to experience the amazing love of Jesus. Uh, we're getting into a new sermon series this morning called Love Your Neighbor, and we're going to be looking at three things, uh, three components of what it might mean to love your neighbor. And the first one is overcoming barriers, uh, that sometimes we have to overcome barriers uh, to get to know and love our neighbor. Our scripture passage for this morning Acts 11 is a summary of what happened in Acts 10, uh, so we didn't have to read all of Acts chapter 10. You're welcome. Um, but basically, in Acts 10, uh, Peter has an interesting experience. Um, he uh, receives visitors at, at his home, like at the very moment that he's getting this vision. He's up on his roof. Uh, it's really more like a balcony because uh, the, their roofs at, at that you know, place in Joppa in that time in history, the roof was more like a balcony. And uh, he was up there and he had kind of this trippy vision of God letting down this sheet with these animals on it. And uh, these were all unclean animals that according to uh, the Jewish law, according to the Levitical law, uh, they were not supposed to eat these animals. Um, and so the sheet's being let down in the vision and Peter at first, he... He thinks it's a test, right? Uh, you know, God's like, uh, kill and eat. Uh, and he's like, this is a test. No way, God, I got this one. Um, not going to do that. But it's not a test. You know, Peter's being voluntold here <laughs> uh, that you don't call something unclean that God calls clean. And yeah, there's a point here for the, the, the laws, the Old Testament Levitical laws are, are actually uh, find their fulfillment in Jesus. And so we, we, uh, we live under the new covenant, don't have to uh, obey that part of the law anymore. There's a point there. But really, what God is more getting to is other people. Don't call other people that I have made unclean. Don't call other people that I have made those people. Uh, don't refuse to go and share the gospel with those people over there that are so different from you and that maybe you look down upon. Uh, and so Peter, he goes. Uh, he goes with uh, the people that uh, Cornelius sent. And uh, he goes to Caesarea, which is a you know, shockingly huge distance of 30 miles, right? Um, and it really points out the fact that, you know what? You don't have to go far to find people that are different from you, uh, that kind of live a, a foreign life. Uh, it was a day's journey, but in just 30 miles, Peter went to a people group that was very different than he was. Uh, he went to Cornelius, uh, who was a, a Roman centurion. I mean, this guy's kind of the enemy. He's the oppressor. You don't go hang out with him. I mean, you don't go hang out with the Samaritans in, in Israel, much less with the Romans. Um, and, and yet, Peter goes to Cornelius' house. Um, you know, it's a lot better reaction than Jonah had when he was called to go to Nineveh, Right? <laughs> Peter's kind of going along with it. Uh, but you see, often we, we kind of have a those people, don't we? Uh, we don't like to. Uh, but if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes we catch ourselves going, uh, those people. You know, and it can be based on a number of different things, unfortunately. You know, it can be a, an is issue of, uh, you know, economic class or, or race or, uh, you know, any number of different things. Um, can divide us, unfortunately. Uh, it might even be as mundane as um, that person next door, you know, their dog just barks at all hours of the night. I don't want to, be, you know, hang out with those people, right? Or the guy that next door that, you know, that leaves the lawn, you know, super high and there's always stuff in the front yard. Uh, when I lived in Arkansas, people would just like park on their front lawn, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, come on. Uh, we, we let a lot of, of, of stuff drive a wedge between us and others. Um, you know, maybe it's that uh, 
they, are, they have 15 cars and they're always parking on the street or, uh, you know, they're always wanting something from you, right? And they're not going to return it. Um, we often kind of have a those people, uh, you know, and it could be a, based on a, a big ideological thing like politics um, or it can be as simple as, um, you know, the people next door that kind of irk us. And it's unfortunate, but we do think that way. I, what I find fascinating about the passage uh, that we've read is that um, we read it like we're on Peter's team here, right? So we read this passage and it's like non-Jewish people are coming to faith in Jesus. And you're like, yay, good for them, you know, about time, right? Well, guess what? Uh, I don't know if you guys can tell by the hair, I am not Jewish. Um, is that a shock? All right. Oh, it may be to some of you guys. I'm not getting the chuckles I thought I would there. But I'm guessing most of you don't have Jewish descent either. The reality is in this passage, we're the other people. We're the people that Peter is going to. Uh, you see, in his mind, uh, the gospel was something he was taking to Jewish people. He was making Jewish Christians. And yet God is showing him in this vision and showing him in his meeting with Cornelius that the gospel is for all people. That God wants all people to be saved and come to knowledge of the truth. We shouldn't have a those people, right? Um, and, and, you know, the reality is we think that when Jesus comes, he kind of like does something new. When he says, oh, you're supposed to love your neighbor and you're supposed to love all, all nations. Um, but the reality is in Genesis 12, way back in the beginning of scripture, God uh, as part of his telling of, of this creation and, and human story, uh, he tells us what he desires for all people on earth. Um, he says to Abraham, he says, leave your land, your relatives, and your father's home. Go to the land I will show you. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. Uh, I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And through you, every family on earth will be saved, will be blessed. Um, you know, we, we think, oh, Jesus is bringing this new thing. But the reality is God has always wanted his people to be welcoming of others, uh, to be sharing the good news with the people of the world, with all nations. I mean, after all, he does, uh, when he sends Jesus, he says, God so loved the world, right? Loves all people, all nations, and wants them uh, to come to faith in him. And so when Jesus comes, <laughs> he accomplishes exactly that for us. You know, if you think about it, Peter did not um, kind of come to this idea that the gospel is for all by himself. He needed God's help, right? It's God that opened his eyes. Uh, well, likewise, we, we don't get to God on our own. We don't abolish sin in our lives, uh, you know, by our own power. It's Jesus who comes and gives, it, gives us his forgiveness as a gift by faith. And so Jesus comes, he takes the sin of the world upon himself so that we might be forgiven and free. Uh, and in baptism, we receive this amazing gift of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And that's what's going on in the, in the text here. So Peter, he gets to proclaim the gospel to Cornelius' family, uh, and then they re receive the gospel with joy and, and are baptized. Um, faith and baptism always go together. Uh, because in baptism, God is giving us his spirit, great faith in us. He's saying, you are mine. That's an incredible thing. See, we, when we say those people, uh, we have something in mind. But when God says those people, he, he means something different. Uh, he's talking about all people that he has made. And when God, uh, he, he doesn't say, oh, look at those people. He says, those are my people. And in baptism, he puts his name on us. He claims us and makes us his own. And that's a promise uh, for you, for your household, for all who are far off, he says. And so Peter has started to figure this out, right? Um, and, and even in Acts 15, he has to defend uh, the Gentiles against uh, Jewish Christians who thought uh, erroneously that you had to first become a Jew and then a Christian, right? So you had to be circumcised and obey all the Jewish law which is not a very popular platform, right? But um, you had to do that and then become a Christian. And Peter stands up um, just four, four chapters removed from this and now gets up and defends uh, the Gentiles and, and all people saying, you know what, we shouldn't force them um, to do all this, this law stuff 
because it's not by obedience that we receive salvation, it's by faith. Um, and he gets up and he, he sets that straight. Uh, that, you know, this gift of salvation is a gift. Baptism is a gift. We need to make sure we keep it that way, um, as, as God's word says. Um, we are, at the end of the summer, we're gonna have a baptism bash. So if you've not been baptized yet, or have somebody you know that would be interested in baptism, on August 2nd, in place of the 1115 service, we're gonna do a baptism bash and picnic. And we encourage you to plan on being there, and we encourage you to, to sign up to be baptized or, or help connect us with people who uh, would value that. Uh, we'll also be doing some baptism reaffirmations, and so if you wanna affirm your baptism, there'll be a spot for that too. Uh, but we think baptism's important, and so we wanted to celebrate it in this way. But you know, this whole experience with Peter kind of makes us think we, we should probably be asking ourselves some questions. And one question I thought to ask myself is, you know, Peter's in Joppa. There's people just 30 miles away from him uh, who need the gospel. And it made me think, um, am I just kind of hanging out with the crowd I'm comfortable with uh, when God is leading me to a new people group? I mean, sometimes we need to be intentional and, and go and, and even free up space in our lives for new relationships with people that might, God might be bringing our way. And, and remember, we don't have to go far uh, to find people who need Jesus, to find people who are different than us. Uh, often, we just have to go next door. Um, at our, our house in Arkansas, Megan and I, um, when we were getting ready to sell it, um, it was interesting. We had, you know, our whole time there, we kind of gotten to know some of our neighbors, but had not put a ton of effort into it. Uh, well, when we were moving out, well, you know, we put this for sale sign up, all that stuff. And then like a week later, we noticed that the for sale sign popped up in our neighbor's house just across from us. We'd really not gotten to know them. But for some reason, like the both of us selling our house thing was an, uh, like an icebreaker we could use. Um, and so we, we had talked to them when they, when they were just hanging out outside, and it was a great conversation. We really hit it off. We're like, yeah, we like this couple. You know, we could really develop a good relationship with them. Uh, and then we both sold our houses and moved away. <laughs> um, and, and it's like, why did I wait for so long to get to know them, to love my neighbor? Why did I, why did I wait until it was like quitting time, you know? And it made me think, you know, I don't want to do that again. I actually want to be good at loving my neighbor. I mean, when, when God says, love your neighbor, um, you know, we're so used to thinking of it kind of like Good Samaritan style, like, oh, everyone is my neighbor. But I think we also need to think of love your neighbor as love your actual neighbor. <laughs> I think God actually means uh, that we should do that as well. And so, you know, I want to be getting better at this. And that means that a lot of times we have to break down barriers. Sometimes those barriers are in our hearts and minds. Um, you know, we need to not be so judgmental of our neighbors at times. You know, uh, maybe the, the behaviors they do that we judge, we need to look past and desire to have a relationship with them before judging. Uh, other times, we need to just break barriers like, how in the world do I get to know my neighbor? I mean, you know, people, they drive into the garage, you never see them. You know, if you do see them outside, you're just kind of like, what's up, you know? And then you walk inside. I mean, we need to overcome those barriers. And so today, we want to help you with that. Uh, and that's part of what the Summer Food Drive is about. Uh, the Summer Food Drive is a great chance, as I said before, uh, to collect food for a great ministry, for Community Ministry Food Bank, and help alleviate hunger. But it's also a great way that we can overcome some barriers. Um, if you haven't met your neighbors, if you asked their name a long time ago, and it would be awkward to ask again, this is for you. <laughs> um, this can really help us to break the ice. Uh, so I'll, sh I'll show you the form here. But basically, pick up a bunch of these in the community room. And the idea is that uh, maybe this week sometime, go around your block and put one of those on people's doors. You know, put your name. If you feel comfortable, you can even put your street address at the bottom so they know it's like really a neighbor and not an imposter. Um, and, and put that in your your neighbor's doors and say, you know what, basically I'm coming back to collect food and if you want to participate, great, just, just be, the, be ready for me to come back. Um, and so, you know, set the date, write it in the form, and then when, when you come back around, come with a stroller or a wagon or something like that, collect food for this great cause, and, and bring it to the first Sunday food offering on July 5th. 
Uh, we have a first Sunday food offering every first Sunday in the community room. Uh, so just bring it to the July 5th one and we'll have a big haul for that Sunday for the food bank. Uh, but as you're going around, take time to meet your neighbors. Pick a time when you think people will be home. Uh, shake some hands, get to know some names. Uh, love people simply just because, you know what, God loves us and desires that we love everyone that he created, right? Um, we don't want to have a, a those people, but sort of a those are my people. <laughs> These are my neighbors. And we know each other and love each other because Christ uh, loves us. So I encourage you uh, to grab some of those flyers on the way out. I printed like 1,500 of them, so don't worry about taking too many. Um, and just use that as a great way to overcome barriers. Uh, because God has called us to love our neighbor. Uh, God has called us uh, to actually get out there. And sometimes it requires, uh, like in the video, getting out of our, our comfort zone a little bit. Uh, sometimes taking the judgment down and just going, you know what, I I'm going to go and I'm going to connect. Uh, because God took that first step uh, for me in the waters of baptism. And now, you know what, I can take a small step uh, to help me connect with my neighbors and overcome barriers uh, to love people as God loves us. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time here this morning, a chance to get into your word, to examine it, ponder it, Lord, and we pray that um, by your Holy Spirit, you would help it to, to have an effect on our heart, one that you desire. Lord, we pray um, this morning that you would remind us uh, again of your forgiveness. Lord, we... Uh, we know that you came uh, to save sinners of which we're the worst. And, and Lord, you uh, saved us from our sins by your son Jesus as a gift. And now we pray uh, that you would help us to live out your words, to do what pleases you, Lord, as your forgiven people, um, by loving our neighbors and specifically by overcoming the barriers that may have kept us separated for a long time. Uh, God, we thank you. We pray for your strength and your spirit uh, to maybe make a small change that makes a big difference. In Jesus' name, amen.